Hello. In this video, we are going to show how to use the program Microsoft Excel to visualize the uh, wave functions and probability distributions of the solutions to the two dimensional particle in a box problem. It turns out that we can write the uh, eigenfunctions as the product of two different functions. The first one, which we show in red, psi m, which is just a function of x, and the blue function, psi sub n of y, a function entirely of y. So we're able to break the two dimensional problem into a product of one dimensional problem that we already know how to solve. So for the one dimension, we have the length of the box is L sub x, and the quantum number we refer to as m. For the other dimension, the length of the box is L sub y, and the quantum number is n. And recall that the quantum numbers for the one-dimensional problem start at one and work up by integers. So we type into cell A1, apostrophe LX. In cell A2, we put in some box length um, in meters. So here we have 0 0.001 for one millimeter. In cell B1, we type apostrophe LY, that's the length in the Y direction. And in cell B2, we put in also a box length. Here, for example, we just put 0 0.001. In cell C1, we put apostrophe M, that's the label for the M quantum number. And in cell C2, we type the number 2. We have to be sure that we type in a positive integer uh, greater than 0. And in cell D1, we type apostrophe N, that's the N quantum number. And in cell D2, for example, here we're typing in the number 3. Next, in cell P4, we type the number zero. In cell Q4, we type the formula equals P4 plus 0 0.02. So we're basically dividing up the box length into uh, 50 subdivisions. Then we're going to copy that formula from Q4 to uh, R4 to BN4. Then we're going to type in cell O5, the number zero again. And then in cell O6, we have a formula equals O5 plus 0 0.02. So this is going in the other dimension, breaking that box length up into uh, 50 subdivisions. And then we copy the cell O6 from O7 to O55. So this will give us the information we need to display the eigenfunctions. So the one we've set up so far is psi sub 2, 3. And if we want to change that, we just change the values in cell C2 and cell D2. But make sure that we use a positive integer in each one. Then we want to type in this complicated formula into cell P5. Note that the part in the beginning that's shown in red, that is the uh, eigenfunction in the x direction. The part that is shown in green is the eigenfunction in the y direction. And overall, we're getting a product of a function of x times a function of y. Then we're going to copy that cell P5 from P5 to BN55. So this will end up being a big table of values. Then to display our kind of three-dimensional graph, we want to left-click on cell O4 and then drag to cell BN55 and keep the uh, left mouse button still depressed. Then up at the top, we want to click on Insert, then Scatter Chart. Then at the bottom, we'll say More Scatter Charts. We want to click on that. And then type, uh, click on the uh, 
uh, entry which says surface. And then at the bottom, you'll click on the box that says OK. So this is the graph that we get uh, using the data that we've uh, described already. Your actual graph will look slightly different. Uh, to make it look like this one, you definitely want to click on such things as click off the legend, click off the grid lines, and click off the axis titles and the chart titles. Now, if we change the M value to 1 and the N value to 4, then we're going to get a three-dimensional graph that looks like what you see uh, on the screen right now. And for a final example, here we have the case where m is equal to 2 and n is equal to 4. So it's pretty clear we can see the kind of um, oscillating sine wave nature of the wave function in both the x and the y direction. Now, if we want to visualize the probability density, the probability that the particle would be in a particular location, first in cell O57, we type in the formula equals O4. Then we copy that cell O57 from P57 to BN57. Copy the cell O57 then from O58 to O108. And then finally, in cell P58, we type in the formula equals P5 times P5. So this is taking um, the wave function and multiplying it by itself. So this is psi star psi effectively. So then we copy cell P58 uh, from P58 to BN108. Then to visualize this type of chart, again, we're going to um, left click on O57, drag and hold to cell BN108. Then we're going to go up top, click on insert, then scatter chart, then more scatter chart, then surface, then OK. It's very similar to what we did um, to visualize the eigenfunctions. We're just uh, using a different area of data to do it. Here is the probability distribution when m is equal to 2 and n is equal to 4. So we see there's a very large number of regions where the probability is 0. So there are numerous locations where the particle cannot be in this case. And we see the, the peaks of these mountains are the areas where the particle is most likely to be found.
This would be the probability distribution in the case where m is equal to 1 and n is equal to 1 as well. So we see in this case that the uh, particle has its highest probability overwhelmingly to be very near the center of the box in this case. And one final example of a probability distribution. Here is the case where m is equal to 1 and n is equal to 2. I thank you very much for your kind attention. Stay healthy, stay safe, and as always, have a good one.